Legionnaires' disease cases continues to rise each year as people age, water infrastructure weakens, temperatures increase, and testing methods become more sensitive. With that comes an added level of complexity during outbreak investigations in how the data is interpreted, how risk is communicated to the public, and the consequences for businesses implicated in an investigation. Today I want to tell you a story about a small beach town in the Northeast. A town where, like the movie Jaws, there was something in the water. Something capable of hurting and killing people, and something that required an unlikely team of local police and fire chiefs, a group of environmental scientists and epidemiologists, and one laboratory leadership service fellow to hunt the water source down. In August of 2018, the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, a popular beach town and tourist destination, experienced the first documented legionellosis outbreak in the state in more than 50 years. Legionellosis is an infection caused by Legionella bacteria, which are naturally found in water and soil and can infect people through the inhalation of aerosolized water droplets that contain the bacteria. Infection can take the form of a severe, sometimes deadly pneumonia known as Legionnaire's disease, and it can cause a more mild flu-like illness known as Pontiac fever. In our outbreak, we identified cases of both. Like all good outbreaks, ours began on a Friday afternoon when the Massachusetts Department of Health called us and notified us of two individuals who had been diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease following a trip to Hampton, New Hampshire. Upon review of our own database, we identified two more individuals in New Hampshire that were diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease as well and had also spent time in Hampton. And given that we see about 30 sporadic cases reported to the state of New Hampshire every year to identify four cases all in one week, all with time spent in the same area we thought was worthy of initiating an investigation. And as more and more cases of Legionnaires began to emerge, we quickly realized that our capacity to handle this as a state was limited and that we would need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> that boat came in the form of an epi aid, and experts from CDC joined us in New Hampshire, and we traveled out to Hampton to begin our outbreak investigation and perform environmental sampling. What challenged this entire investigation was the timing of things. Like Jaws, Hampton is a summer town that needs summer dollars, and we were just one week away from Labor Day weekend and then the Hampton Seafood Festival, an event that brings an extra 150,000 people to this small beach town. So we had an outbreak on our hands, and we needed to find the source fast. Like Jaws, we had a team composed of scruffy-looking scientists such as myself, and the local police and fire chiefs that were deputized as local health officers to help us with our investigation. And they were instrumental to our investigation. They knew the town, the business owners, and when you're a large group of people trying to sample, fully dressed in backpacks and not bikinis, you definitely stand out in a beach town. There are also some more challenging individuals to work with, though this time it wasn't a mayor, but rather a hotel owner because it was the interviews with cases about their exposures are what guided our environmental sampling. So just by us going to a business to sample gave the public impression that we were implicating them in the outbreak. So as you can imagine, not many business owners were very happy to see us. This is where we began our sampling, the Sands Resort Hotel. As early in the investigation, most of the cases had reported staying at or using their facilities, like their hot tub or their shower. This is their hot tub. It can hold about 20 people, but it wasn't permitted or registered with the state, and it was enclosed in a really small room that only had one tiny vent shown here in the upper right. This is that same vent from the outside. You'll notice it's right next door to an outdoor shower that people can use and was just yards away from one of the main streets of the town. And previous Legionelle outbreaks have shown that aerosolized water droplets containing the bacteria can spread up to a mile from the source. So we hypothesized that even if people didn't stay at the hotel or use that hot tub, they could have been infected just by walking or driving by this vent. While we started at the hotel where many of the cases had stayed, we wanted to do our due diligence and make sure there wasn't another source we were missing. And this is where having laboratorians on the sampling team proved to be especially helpful because we know the area is most likely to favor growth of biofilms and Legionella bacteria but we also know what the optimal specimen types are to collect in order to find the source of the outbreak. So we sampled. We sampled public beach showers. We sampled waterfalls at many golf parks. We sampled the local water park. Shown here is a map of Hampton. You can see the geographic spread of where we sampled with the labels based on where cases had been. 
And it's because of this spread that there was some initial concern that a cooling tower could be the source of this outbreak. So when the local police department offered up their drone to look for cooling towers on the tops of buildings, we were happy to oblige. It was definitely the highlight of the investigation for me. We also uh, sampled from other hotels and hot tubs where some cases had stayed. And at this point in the investigation, word had started to get out and businesses were really wary of our presence. With this particular hot tub, we suspect the owner knew we were coming because by the time we got there and sampled the water, the chlorine levels were off the charts. It left a burning film on our hands when we touched the water and it certainly wasn't safe for any human to be in that very crystal clear <laughs> hot tub water. It was also very suspect for someone dumping in a lot of disinfectant right before we got there. And so when you learn about outbreak investigations in school, they generally don't teach you that people can intentionally compromise your samples and impact your study, though it certainly did here. So because despite some cases having reported staying at this hotel and using this hot tub, we were never able to link it in our investigation because the disinfectant levels were so high that it completely destroyed any DNA or bacteria we tried to test for. So what did we do with all the samples we collected? We sent them to the laboratory for testing. While we were at the beach doing environmental sampling, the New Hampshire Public Health Lab was busy testing clinical samples from patients with Legionnaire's disease and coordinating the shipment of samples to CDC for further testing. The state public health lab was also involved in the coordination and shipping of samples from our neighboring states. Hampton is a tourist town, and the majority of the cases in this outbreak weren't New Hampshire residents, but rather from our neighboring states of New York and Massachusetts. And coordination with other states is probably a somewhat obvious role of the laboratory, but it proved to be especially important in this investigation because we already had those relationships established, so we knew who we needed to call when we needed to act fast. Which brings me back to JAWS and how to interpret your findings. How do you know if you found a shark? or the shark. Similarly, if you find Legionella, how do you know it's the strain causing your outbreak? The results from our sampling identified multiple species and serogroups of Legionella from various water sources, including this water pump shown here, which is not surprising given that it's an environmental microbe. But how do you interpret the positive result in the context of the local Legionella ecology? And that's where laboratorians are your best resource. Not only can we differentiate between species and serogroups and sequence types, but we know the test limitations and how much weight you can put on preliminary results. So with an impending holiday weekend, we had to make public health decisions in real time with limited data and preliminary test results at best. And so that's when we relied on the consult of the laboratorians to help guide our public health order implementation, our messaging to the public about risk, and our decision to name the businesses being investigated. So what happened? Legionella bacteria were identified in nearly half of the environmental samples collected at the Sands Resort Hotel, including six separate positives from the hot tub alone. It was a very gross hot tub, and I will probably never use a hot tub again. <laughs> but it was that same strain of Legionella pneumophila, serogroup one, sequence type 94, that we were also able to isolate from a person infected with Legionnaire's disease who had also stayed at the Sands Resort Hotel. So we were able to link the clinical isolate to the isolates from the environmental sampling. So a public health order was put in place, mandating the hotel owner to close the hot tub, to notify guests of their exposure, and to perform remediation on the hotel water system. The hotel owner complied, though he chose to hold his own press conference with the media, stating his business had been unfairly targeted. He tried to blame the municipal water system for the Legionella, which we also evaluated. It was negative. And he finally, he chose to post a rebuttal, shown here on the left, next to the mandated public health posting, shown here on the right. There are also legal implications to this outbreak, and they occurred on both sides from the owner threatening to sue the state while we were sampling, to sick individuals suing the hotel owner. And there's an entire industry made up of lawyers, environmental consultants, and private laboratories that prey upon business owners during Legionella outbreaks. As soon as this outbreak hit the news, the Sands Resort hotel owner started receiving calls from companies offering their services for legal advice and remediation. And if you think about it, every business implicated in a Legionella outbreak is particularly vulnerable to this type of ambulance chasing, or in this case, outbreak chasing business practice. 
How was he supposed to make an educated decision about what company to hire for remediation when he himself was just learning what Legionella was and how his property could have made people sick? But it doesn't just end with the outbreak. As a government agency, we can't tell the hotel owner what company to hire to use for the remediation or the follow-up testing. But what the laboratorians can do is review the, the company's business practices and state whether or not their methodology meets the requirements needed to lift the public health order. We were also able to share a list of elite laboratories. These are labs verified by CDC to perform Legionella testing and do it in concordance with the recommended guidelines, which is ultimately what the hotel owner chose to do. And after superheating and chlorinating and flushing his water lines, the follow-up test results were negative for Legionella. And he also chose, perhaps pragmatically, to permanently shut down the hotel hot tub. So altogether, this outbreak resulted in the identification of at least 34 individuals with illness consistent with legionellosis, two of whom died. And the majority of cases were linked to the Sands Resort. However, not every case reported contact with the hotel, so we can't rule out the possibility of a secondary source. That being said, no new cases occurred after the Sands Resort hot tub was closed, lending further support that the Sands Resort hot tub was the main source of this community outbreak. But this outbreak is just one of many that occur every year as Legionnaire's disease is on the rise nationally. And what we learned in the Granite State can be applied to other states. First, know who the likely and unlikely public health partners are in your state. These are your neighboring state health departments, your local health officials, which could be a police chief or a fire chief. And it also helps to know who the for-profit laboratories and consulting agencies are in your state. As they may, may weasel their way into your investigation as well. And second, utilize your public health laboratory, both in testing capability and laboratory expertise. Get us involved from the start. We can help guide you on where and what to sample, how to interpret your test results, and what the best test methods are for a long-term water management plan. We're here and we're happy to help. So with summer coming quick, it's only a matter of time before we find something else in the water. After all, Jaws did have a lot of sequels. <laughs> But we learned a lot from this outbreak, and at least in New Hampshire, we'll be better prepared. Thank you.